Boys, if you didn't know, I got my start in speedrunning from a game called Pogo Stuck. So I know it goes into the grind and the art of speedrunning. So today, we're going to react to a Summoning Salt video titled, The History of Super Mario 64 16 Star World Records. And if you like the input I have on this video, drop a like and subscribe, and stick around for more content. First things first, Summoning Salt loves to use a very familiar song to us. Alright, this is a song we've used to clutch up in speedruns before. Yeah, in many runs before, we've used this song to clutch up in speedruns and to give ourselves inspiration to keep pushing for those uh, personal bests and world records. Uh, it's one, it's a song that's near and dear to my heart. It's a Summoning Salt classic. Be ready. You guys know this song in chat. You guys know the song. Home, we're finally landing, baby. Classic. It's just so epic of a song. Super Mario 64, 16 star. It's the most popular category in the most popular speed game of all time. Holding a record in it is one of gaming's toughest accomplishments. Ridiculous glitches and insane movement. Both requirements for a world record. I mean, this is true. 16 star is like the most popular. It's like the one everyone races on Twitch. It's the one like... I learned first. Uh, the only other one I know is 70 star and like one star. But 16 star is just the most applicable to the the new man playing or speed running Super Mario 64 for the first time. It's just it's so it's so hype from the from the movement to the levels to the stars you're you're running. It, it's 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 the most hype category and the most and the easiest and most fun I think. Just a lucky few have been able to call themselves a record holder. And with the incredible level of competition, it's hard to hold on to it for long. But let's take a look at those gamers and see how they did it. This is the history of the 16 star world record. Let's go, baby. What font is this? Like some RuneScape ass font. <laughs> Classic BLJs. Hello? They do fucking inside the volcano stars? I guess he's gonna talk about the different routes and stuff, right? Different routes that have evolved throughout the uh, world records progression. Super Mario 64 has 120 stars you can collect. There are speedrun categories that involve collecting all of them. However, the developers only required you to collect 70 of them to beat the game. True. That's how many you needed to make it up the endless staircase and into the final stage. For years, 70 stars was the minimum needed to beat Super Mario 64. But years after the game's release, that number suddenly dropped to 50. Eventually, it was lowered again, this time to 31. And in 2004, the Wait, why why do you think that is? Okay, the f f f that's crazy by the way to think that like people actually thought you couldn't beat the game before 70 stars number 1. 50 Probably because it requires like 50 stars to get into Bowser 2, and then people found BLJs, maybe? And then 31? What? What's 31? I don't understand the, where 31 comes from. Maybe he'll explain it, but that's crazy. The number fell to just 16. Super Mario 64 could now be completed in under half an hour. And in the summer of 2004, the first 16 star speedruns of Mario 64 were performed. There were a handful of records set over the course of a few months, from players like Cyberrath and Christina Corsak. But the dust settled a bit when a runner named Ilu Dude set a big record. In November 2004, he beat the game with 16 stars in 21 minutes and 56 seconds. Okay, that's faster than my current PB. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> my, my current PB is like 25 minutes, all right? This is happening in 2004, which is like eight years after the game came out. It's currently uh, 25 years after the game came out. Jesus Christ. And here's how he did it. The first goal in a 16 star speedrun is to collect 8 stars, which unlocks the first no, Bowser, level, Bowser in the Dark World. 
He got the first star by going into bob -omb Battlefield and ground pounding the Chain Chomp's pole three times. Slow! Star. Slow Megalo! One of the fastest ways to move in Super Mario 64 is the long jump. So Illudu chained these together over and over whenever he could. Next, he went into Womp's Fortress to collect five more stars. He got the first two by going to the top of the stage, defeating Womp, Classic. and then climbing to the top of the fortress. He then quickly got the star on the ledge by side flipping to it, then opened the cannon, used it to blast away the wall, and shot himself into the no star to collect it. A Cringe. slow process that ate up around half a minute. And it's still faster than my PB. Finally, he got picked up by the owl Yikes. to fall into the cage and collect another star. That put his total at six No stars. owl is? The remaining two came from sliding down Peach's slide to collect both stars, despite a bit of slow movement along the way. Illudude was then able to enter Bowser in the Dark World, where he used long jumps all over to move through the stage. It took two throws to hit Bowser with a bomb, but eventually he got the job done. Now that he could go into the basement, Illudude's next goal was to collect seven more stars to allow Mips the Rabbit to appear. <laughs> the first two stars came from Shifting Sandland, where he got one from quickly jumping at the top of the pyramid, that one's a classic. and the other from slowly waiting on top of a pillar for a bird to arrive. The next two no came from strat? Lava Land, where Illudude boiled the big bully and collected eight red coins. Okay. His movement wasn't ideal in any of these sections. No dives? As his only real strategy for moving fast was to long jump whenever he could. Finally, the last three stars no came kicks. from collecting the Toad Star, then heading into Hazy Maze Cave, getting the Emergency Exit Star, and the Watch for Rolling Rock Star. Okay, those are still Now, Illudu very viable. had 15 stars, which spawned Mips the Rabbit. Normally, you can just grab him for a star, but Illudude was going to use him for a trick discovered by Dom Dunk a few months prior. This was the key to beating the game with 16 stars. Uh, okay, so Mips, Mips is what lowered it to 16 stars, then 31 is still confusing to me. What strat allowed 31? Because how much does the tor how much does the second, the bottom door to Dire Dire Docks, how much is that? How many stars is that? I'm pretty sure maybe that's the one that's 50 and then you need 20 more upstairs. I'm Googling this. Oh, it's only 30. So why 31? Oh, because you need the Bowser substar to unlock Bowser 2 and then you do BLJs. Okay, so so 31. So why do, then what about 50? Then 50 is a weird number. I don't know. Whatever. The first step is getting Mips through this door. By putting him down right in front of it, then going through the door, you can quickly jump back and stand inside the door. From there, you can pick up Mips, turn around, and place him on the other side. Okay, that's way slower than then the normal Then you strat want to take today. Mips to this door, which you normally need 30 stars to pass through. By placing him in front of it... Okay, he just fucking said 30 stars. I could have just waited 5 seconds and then he would have told me how many stars it usually takes. God damn it. I googled it for no reason. All these slow strats are still faster than your PB. Bruh. You can jump between Mips and the door to get pushed through it, skipping the 30 star rep Wait, why don't people do that today? Is that slower? That looked fast as fuck. I guess the other one is faster if you can hit the angle real quick. Fireman. The Mips clips could be difficult to perform, but if done properly, they would save many minutes off a of Super Mario 64 speedrun. After this, Illudude went into Dire Dire Docks, collected the submarine star to unlock Bowser in the fire sea, and went through it as fast as he could. Why'd he say it like that? He, went, he, he could unlock a dire dire docks. <laughs> yeah, why'd he say it like that? Once again, it took him two throws to defeat Bowser, but he now had Two throws kind of cringe. It was time to head upstairs, where he was about to perform probably the most iconic trick in Super Mario 64 speed. Hell yeah, baby. The backwards long jump. BLJs, baby. This trick was popularized in a November 2000 edition of Nintendo Power Magazine, but it's quite likely Nintendo knew about it as early as 1997, 
Since that year, they released an updated version of Super Mario 64 in Japan that made the trick impossible. Uh... When you do a long jump but hold the stick backwards, the game gives Mario a slight boost of speed. Wait, they covered it in Nintendo Power Magazine? That's pretty sick, actually. Imagine reading that and being like, what the fuck, this is a thing? And then going home and trying it. Poor Japan got it patched. How do they patch in Japan? Wasn't the game out for a year? Everyone already had the fucking copy where you could do BLJs. It normally snaps back to normal quickly after, but if you land fast enough, like on stairs, it's preserved so you can do another backwards long jump. By jumping over and over, it's possible to catch Mario in a loop where his speed continuously builds up. He can keep going faster and faster. If your speed builds fast enough, it's possible to be on one side of wall on one frame and the other side on the next. And that means if you mash correctly, you can backwards long jump and fly through doors. Dude, BLJs are so sick. It's like the most fun fucking thing to do. You get so much, you go wee. Illu Dude performed this on both the 50 star door and the endless staircase, bypassing the requirements for 50 and 70 stars, respectively. Then, oh, the top door to go into the up upstairs is 50. So then people would just be a BLJ endless staircase, and then someone said, wait, what if we could BLJ the first staircase? And then that made it 31. Why? Wow, we're figuring it out. We're figuring it out as we go. It was a matter of making it through Bowser in the sky and hitting Bowser with three bombs at the end. It took him six throws. But it was six throws? To Cringe! 2156. World record by a significant margin. This run was pretty good for 2004, given how new the MIPS clips and BLJs were. However, as noted before, the movement left much to be desired. Mm. And some tricks took several tries. Mm. And about six months later, a player named Kirby Carter would lower it by about a minute. He definitely did clean up the movement a bit, but was still mostly using long jumps. He didn't miss as many throws on Bowser, and was able to get the BLJs extremely quickly. However, the biggest revolution introduced in this run was the new, more reliable version of the MIPS clips. Ah, see, this is today's strats. These are current strats. Oh, not that. Yeah, there you go. For the first one, by dropping MIPS on the seam between the door and the wall, Mario gets pushed forward and becomes stuck inside the door. Except now the rest you... of the trick can be completed as before. Well, now you don't you don't need to place the rabbit down. You can just jump backwards and you go through the door with MIPS still in your hand. You don't have to place it and go through the door animation anymore. For the second clip, it's the same process as the first clip, but instead of getting stuck in the door, Mario gets pushed through all the way to the other side. These clips were both faster and more consistent than before, becoming the clear methods to use. So going into mid-2005, Kirby Carter's 2046 was on top. A solid record, with video proof that, from 2005, wasn't always a given. The record timeline was pretty straightforward at this point, and had followed a pattern seen by most early speedruns from the mid-2000s. Early runs recorded on VHS with primitive strategies, VHS? followed by improvements in big chunks over the following years. Oh However, my God. after this point, the 16-star history takes a bit of a turn. Imagine fucking, imagine reeling back a VHS and fucking record your speedrun. Like, <laughs> No wonder everyone thought fucking gamers were nerds back in the day. Jesus Christ. It's so easy nowadays. Now it's cool and, and hip. That's mad, that's mad funny. Hey guys, check out my VHS. I beat the game in 20 minutes. It was like, shut the fuck up, nerd. Slaps the VHS out of your hand. <laughs> now everyone's got fucking smartphones. You can pull up your speed run and be like, yo, check this shit out. And everyone's like, yo, that's dope, bro. For the next several years there would be two major caveats in the timeline. Caveats? First, cheated or faked runs would be illegitimately on top of the leaderboard for Cringe. more than 80% of the next decade. For most games, cheated runs do occasionally happen, but rarely does it affect the record timeline as substantially as it did for 16 star. So, 
The fastest runs from legitimate players will be included in this video instead. And second, although most runs had video proof when performed, records before 2013 have very little video surviving today, and some of the surviving stuff is very low quality. Mm. Many runs were live streamed at the time, Surely but the videos video weren't then. saved. There were also many emulator records at this time, but since they reduce lag and aren't kept on the same leaderboard as console runs, they won't be included in this video. It's a bit tricky to analyze runs from this period, Salute but we'll my fellow emulator with what we players. Can. After Kirby Carter's 2046, a player named Le Courier 103 would rapidly lower the record down to 1908 over the course of 2005. He posted his times on the Speed Demos Archive forum, but videos for these runs seem to have never made it online. So, despite lowering the record by a minute and a half, there's not much to analyze. Then, by 2009, the record scene moved to Japan. Through August Ooh. 2009, four players set a record. Sho, Shigeru, Kass, and Taka. Most of these runs don't have surviving video, and the ones that do were live streamed with 2009 Jesus levels Christ. of quality. So instead, <laughs> we'll skip to Fucking December a. 2009, when we find Worf when he turns on his webcam. Finally get a run with a clean video feed from Taka. Remember, Kirby Carter had gotten a 20 minute run in 2005, and there were allegedly 19 minute runs later that year. What did Taka get in 2009? How about a run clocking in at 17 minutes, 18 seconds? <laughs> to put it bluntly, this record was on another level. 17, 18, and 2009, bro. Oh my god, he does the advanced the fucking amount of mountain tricks, strat. The level of optimization. Everything about Taka's run was miles ahead of runs from years prior. Truth be told, there had been many new strategies slowly implemented in runs over the years. But they all came together in Taka's record. And they started literally right when the game begins. Like to skip. Normally, once you reach the middle of the bridge, Lakitu stops you for a cutscene. By jumping on the very edge of the bridge railing, Taco is able to skip the trigger for the cutscene and save about seven seconds. The first ever Lakitu skip. That's kind of badass if you pull that out. Once he went inside, however, the run really started to take off. This was thanks in part to a handful of major new tricks. Kirby Carter's run from 2005 was good, but Taka had some tricks up his sleeve that changed everything. Trick number one. In bob -omb Battlefield, Taka performed the bomb clip. Hell yeah. Wait, what? The bomb and getting pushed by it toward the gate, you can precisely jump before it explodes, getting pushed through the gate to collect the That's way harder. The amount of timing on that, dude, that's nuts. That is so much harder than, than today's bomb clip. What the fuck, dude? Star. This saves close to 10 seconds over the standard method. Taka then went to Womp's Fortress and performed trick number two, a legendary one Canis. that is oh, oh my god, Cannonless. The normal process for getting the blast away the wall star is slow, and it involves opening the cannon, jumping in it, shooting at the wall, and landing to collect the star. However, this can all be skipped by performing cannonless, where you just run at the wall in the perfect spot and collect the star with- He doesn't even do a setup! What a savage! Not even a setup, just fucking die- just fucking books it off the ledge straight into the wall! How- the amount of tries he probably has to go through to hit that consistent- like, like that's not consistent at all, there's no shot. He has to do bomb clip and that- in the same, like, like the old bomb clip, whatever the fuck he did before, that timing, and just, he just sprints into the wall and gets it in the same time. Like, there's, he's gotta have, like, a million resets before he gets both of those in the same run. And then it's, like, he hits that and he's like, all right, it's on. This is a run. Without like, what? Away the wall. It saves around 20 seconds over using the cannon, which is huge, but the issue is the precision involved. 
You need yeah, to no hit shit. the exact right spot in the wall for this to work. So that Mario grabs the ledge the star is on top of, and his hitbox moves up to intersect with the star. Even taking time to set up the trick didn't help very much. The most skilled players struggled to hit the trick more than about 20% of the time. 16 star runs were transformed with cannonless. You had a couple shots to get it, but if you failed, you'd have to reset. So now, most runs wouldn't make it past the 2.5 minute mark. Thankfully, Taka hit cannonless first try, just so he could go and perform trick number 3 immediately after. Owlis, baby. By triple jumping and wall kicking off the cage perfectly, you could fall in it without having to use the okay. owl. Owlis hasn't, it doesn't seem to have changed. Owlis isn't that bad if you know what you're doing. It doesn't seem to have changed. I think like simply does a faster version of Alice or just like a better version. I don't know, but that's the way I do it. It only saved around six seconds, but Owlis became a staple of 16 star runs as well. Another big What's upgrade fine? for Taka was his movement. Older runs had just used long jumps, but Taka carefully selected his moves to optimize the speed of each section. Diving was used all over for short speed boosts, while long jumps still had their place for longer straight sections. This upgraded movement could particularly be seen in Bowser in the Dark World, Damn. where oh Taka my God, varied clean. his movement all over to collect 8 red coins for an additional star. The back half was clean too. Fast MIPS clips and BLJs helped save some additional time. Whee! However, the run definitely wasn't without its faults. He had some slip-ups, like here in Lethal Lava Land, and he missed the throw on Bowser at the very end. Oh no. But thanks to the upgrades in movement, strategies, and overall execution, Sheesh! Taka's run was more than three minutes faster than the early records. Super Mario 64 speedruns were about to enter a new era. Gone were the days of infrequent records with suboptimal strategies. Over the next year and a half, the record would be broken nearly a oh dozen my God. times. That trick is Most sick. Most of the videos for these records didn't survive, but the few we do have show gameplay far ahead of its time. The two dominant record holders for this era were Taka and Shigeru. They took turns lowering the record into the low 17s, no before way. Shigeru broke the sub-17 barrier with a 1654. But when Taka mm. took the record back with a 1652, he had a trick up his sleeve. LBLJ. LBLJ stands for Lobby Backwards Long Jump, and its origins can be traced to an October 2006 video where Mr. Robert Z jumped up from below and grabbed an exposed ledge. He theorized that you could then possibly do a backwards long jump. And it turns out he was right. A tool-assisted runner named Mijitsu showed it off in a TAS a month later, and it was eventually adopted by runners. People making TASs in 2006? I didn't even know that was a thing back then. It's crazy. I was like seven years old. Fucking nuts. By backwards long jumping into the basement ceiling, which extends upwards, you can land and repeatedly jump to build speed. You then land in a black area outside the front door with a lot of speed still built up. Then, you rotate the camera precisely to steer Mario's speed toward the 8 star door. If done properly, Mario will shoot through it and land next to the entrance for Bowser in the Dark World. This ultimately saves time because many of the 8 stars needed to open the door are slow, like ground pounding Womp three times. Mm. By ignoring the 8 star requirement, players could now just get the key right away, collect three fast stars in Womp's fortress, and head straight to the basement. It saved half a minute overall. Armed with LBLJ, Shigeru would continue to grind 16 star in 2010 and 2011. He would pull away from Taka, lowering the record deeper into the 16s, while optimizing his movement and tricks along the way. Wait, is that, that's that's 100 still used in today's record, right? LBL, I didn't even know that LBLJ is is used for to speed up 16 star. I think that's crazy. I thought it was like a 120 star thing. I guess it's an everything thing, right? I don't even know why they do it in 120 star. You have to get every star anyways. I guess it's a faster route. I don't know. I always knew about LBLJ, but I didn't know like. Where, when and where it's implemented in speedruns. 
I guess they used they were using it back then. Fucking a, two thousand nine. While you were in kindergarten, they studied the blade. No, they studied the fucking Italian man. It was starting to feel inevitable that somebody would break the 16-minute barrier. Right side is fucking hype. Oh my god. But as it turns out, the first person to get a sub-16 wouldn't be Shigeru. It wouldn't be Taka, either. Oh? In fact, it wasn't anyone who had set a 16-star record before. In August 2011, someone else broke through with a 1554, and his name was Matt Turk. We're still in unfamiliar territory. I don't know who any of these people are. Nah, I'm just kidding. It was Akira. Wait, what? Who the fuck's Matt Turk? I don't get that. Akira's run was a culmination of strategies that had been slowly developed over the years. It started with LBLJ. He got it very cleanly, quickly rotating the camera to drop Mario in Bowser in the Dark World. After collecting eight red coins in the key, he got Cannonless first try, Owl List, Dude. and the Side Flip Star, making all three of these stars seem effortless. In Lethal Lava Land, he boiled the Big Bully, got a couple stars in the Volcano, got the Log Rolling Star via a precise triple jump wall kick, and got eight red coins. These five stars were all relatively quick, the longest one taking only about 20 seconds. He then went into Shifting Sandland, got the star in the top of the pyramid, then bounced off a snippet to get nice. the Nice! Boing Boing strats. In Hazy Maze Cave, that one's he sick, dude. jumped to get into the dinosaur room quickly, then grabbed the emergency exit and rolling rock stars. The MIPS clips were about perfect, and in Dire Dire Docks, Akira went for the risky front sub, front sub to no save a way. couple seconds. He tore through Bowser in the Fire Sea, barely making a fast First cycle? Jump. Nice. Both the backwards long jumps were instantaneous, and he nailed every Bowser throw oh my to God, wrap up dude. a sub-16 minute Dream run. run. This seemed like it would be the last minute- Not like Minecraft Dream, like the dream run. Matt Turk, he held, like, every punch-out record at one point? Okay, got- okay, I get it. I got it. Got the reference. Thank you. Thank you, Donley. Barrier ever broken in 16 star. There simply wasn't enough time to save to take it past 15 minutes. That being said, there was still some room to take it lower into the 15s. About six months later, Batora would grab the record for the first time with a 1552. Sure. Losing a bit of time to bad movement early, but saving oh time at the end with a cleaner Bowser in the sky. Not to be outdone, Akira would beat him by a full 8 seconds in April 2013, thanks to a fast LBLJ at the start and tearing through the other BLJs. This 1544 would then stand on top of the leaderboard for the next two years. That's an incredibly long time for a category as competitive as 16 star. There were a few reasons this happened, but one really big reason is a trick about three minutes into the run. I'm talking, of course, about Cannonless. It was a pretty big blow when two-thirds of your runs would die to the same trick right at the start. There wasn't a way around it. You either got Cannonless, or you reset. For years, Cannonless had been ending record runs before they could really begin. And it helped lead to stretches like this, where no world records were set for many months. Mm. If someone could just figure out a way to set it up consistently, to grab the star every time, it would open up so many new doors. Hey, wouldn't that be slower, though? And in October 2014, that's exactly what Sockfolder did. Sockfolder is a speedrunning legend. He's found revolutionary setups for tricks in Ocarina oh, of Time, wait, Luigi's that's Mansion, sick. even the original Super Mario Bros. Once he sets his mind to figuring something out, he's usually able to do so. This time, it was a way to solve Cannonless. On October 8th, 2014... OG Cannonless sucks? It looks awful. <laughs> it looks terrible. He came out with this complicated setup. You would grab the ledge, Pull yourself up, punch twice, reset the camera, walk straight down, adjust the camera, pull yourself up, backflip, punch, walk straight down again, 
reset the camera again, then pull yourself up and walk down. If all this was- Okay, that's kind of the setup that people do today, except you don't do the shit in the top left. You literally just, coming from the right, you just jump and grab ledge and then do the backflip, punch, camera, camera. Walk down, grab ledge, hold up, hold down, walk in. It's done properly, you would grab the star every single time. That looks 10 times slower. Am, am I crazy? Fine. The obvious problem with this was how slow it was. Yeah. Even if done quickly, the setup cost 10 seconds over normal cannonless. That's a significant amount of time in a run like 16 star. But luckily, later the same day, runners Death Tech and Gothic Logic same day? find an improvement. You didn't actually have to do the first part of the setup. You could skip straight to jumping on the ledge next to the plank, then perform the setup from there. This meant you'd only lose 6 seconds instead of 10, still which lost was a seconds. bit more reasonable. And the whole process still lined you up perfectly to grab the ledge and collect the star. It's no exaggeration to say that cannonless setup was one of the biggest finds in speedrunning history. Those two-thirds of runs that died at cannonless were now gone. It now had a near 100% success rate. Banger song in our playlist. This gave the record so much more potential since without having to reset as much early, players could focus on optimizing the rest of the run. So, throughout 2015, a handful of runners were gunning for the record. And what resulted was a mad dash to push the record down as much as possible. This is 2015, he said? God it! Oh, what the- Fifteen twenty nine. Another fifteen twenty nine. Pillarless. Oh my god, they fucking invented pillarless. Front sub. Sheesh. Fifteen twenty eight. Bad run. <laughs> oh my god, the movement. The movement's unreal. No fucking way. By May twenty sixteen. Zaya had taken the record all the way to 1524. A run with a really fast LBLJ, nearly every trick hit throughout the stages, and fast BLJs to boot. The only real noticeable slowdowns were a slow start to Pillarless and getting oh. that boulder luck in Hazy Maze Cave. Yeah. A very impressive record given how many tricks were now in the run. Damn, if he like if that bomb doesn't explode there. And he fucking the boulders. It's like what, fifteen ten maybe? Saves like fifteen seconds. No, maybe not that much. What's the what's the record right now? Can I can I look this up? Fourteen fifty six. It's sub fifteen today. By the way, this guy Sha Shaya Shaya, I don't know how you say it. The Japanese guy that just got fifteen twenty four. He hasn't in beaten that run. It's still fifteen twenty four today. And same with Akira. Akira has not gone below fifteen. 29 so we're about to see some new names soon all right let's keep going and incredibly this record too would stand for nearly two you got it last week for that slippery nip but eventually a couple of new runners began to get really low times their personal bests dropped below 16 minutes eventually into the 1540 range and it became evident that both of them were going to make a push for the record this is Aki and Ouija. Sheesh. In November 2017, Aki got on a run that had potential. A great LBLJ, pillarless, cannonless. After getting the second key, he was on pace for a 1525. 
but could potentially get as low as 1518 if he matched his best last split ever. A record by 6 seconds. It was all going to come down to the BLJs. Decent. Pretty good as well. They were decent, but not good enough for a record. Mm. Aki would finish with a 1528, four seconds behind Zaya. But a few months later, he'd have another shot at it. Four seconds ahead of his last run, he once again needed good BLJs. Oh, cracked first one. Uh, sloppy second. This time, it was good enough. A 15-22. Beating Zaya by two seconds and making Aki well record. the new record holder. <laughs> but a few days later, it was Ouija's turn. This isn't the same guy on Twitter, like Ouija the God, is it? That'd be crazy if it was. Dude, the, that BLJ getting directly into the tube for Bowser 3 is crazy. I never hit that. I've never hit that in my I life. Did I did it! <laughs> He's just squealing. I did it, I did it man. 15-17. Dude, being fast at this game is nuts to me. I did, I did it. This was the first ever sub-15-20 in 16 star history. One new trick he and Aki were using was in Womp's Fortress, where he oh, used a new setup for something? cannonless called Texture Setup texture that had been setup, theorized yeah. years prior by Snowman. Instead of using Sock Folder's long setup, Ouija just lined up Mario's feet with a texture in the side of the plank and went for it. That's crazy. It wasn't as consistent as the normal setup, but it was faster and still That's more nuts. consistent than no setup at all. Compromises like this had to be made now that the remaining time saves were disappearing. He gained some time over Aki with a cleaner lethal lava land, but lost some in Bowser in the Fire Sea. Still His improvable, BLJs baby! Were excellent, it's still but beatable! He had a slight mistake at the end of Bowser in the Sky. Although the run had some downfalls, it was still a record by 5 seconds. Not to be outdone, Aki would fire back six months later with a 15-16. Jesus Christ. Dude, that's like the most motivating thing in speedrunning. is like watching your run back and being like, oh, I fucked up there. This could be faster. I could do this faster. Like watching my post suck runs, I'm like, it's a mistake. I could do that better. I could, do, I could definitely get this time down. I've been kind of... Listen, it's been a while since I've grinded it, but... There's definitely, I definitely want to go back and, and set some new times at some point in Pokestuck. I'm just a busy guy. Got some content to make, you know what I'm saying? It's just such a motivating factor, though. Just going back, looking at your runs, and being like, I could do this faster. There's a mistake there. Like, achieving, uh, seeking perfection is, is a big motivator in uh, speedrunning. And at the top level, it can be like fucking grueling and stressful mentally. He messed up the triple jump in Hazy Maze Cave, and his Fire Sea had a slow ending. He made up the time over Ouija, however, with a faster Mips grab while standing, and cleaning up his mistake in Bowser in the Sky. He also threw Bowser a bit faster each time, saving a fraction of a second per throw. At this point, when the record was lowered, it was typically only by a second or maybe a few seconds at most. When records get as precise as 16 star, where players have done tens of thousands of runs each, taking time off in big chunks was pretty much out of the question. But incredibly, just three weeks after his 1516, Aki was in position to do just that. 
dude. Imagine being that... Imagine being seven seconds green. World record pace. As always, it came down to the BLJs. No pressure. Clean. Clean. Oh, I think go straight in. Cringe. This was it. An unbelievable chance to make history. He just had to make it through Bowser in the sky, hit all three of the throws, and he'd be golden. I love watching right side. No way he misses the throw. No way. Oh my god, that was close. No, he hits it. Sub. Sub 10. Oh my god. <laughs> Seven seconds is ridiculous. The 1508 was the largest cut off the record in more than three and a half years. A near perfect run from start to finish. The mistakes in Hazy Maze Cave and Fire Sea were cleaned up, and his movement overall was optimized for time saves too. As you'd expect, this run stayed at the top of the leaderboard for a long time. Mm. Six months later, it was still in first. Second place was eight seconds behind. Nobody That's was crazy. getting close to it. To have a realistic chance at beating this, you'd need new strats. The old ones had just about completely been optimized. As good as Aki was, it would help to change his approach if he wanted to take the record under 1508. So, as 2019 came around, 2019 he looked into what else he could do. still fucking optimizing time. this shit. I've seen simply try to learn that strat, the one you go under and back up in that, that first pinwheel in Bowser 1. It's not easy. It is not easy. First, there was Cannonless. Texture setup was great, but it lost a few seconds over just running at the wall and praying. So, Aki decided that he needed to give up the consistency of the setup and go back to normal cannon. That's crazy. The same awful, brutal trick that killed two-thirds of all runs years prior. This was obviously a really tough move, but the run was getting so optimized that it was worth it. Second, Aki went for a faster setup for Pillarless. Developed by Tama, you would do the jump dive on the hill instead of going over the top. This enabled you to get hands-free quicker, and allow the trick to begin sooner than before. With these setups in mind, Aki kept doing attempts. On May 10th, the new time That's, I've seen Clint Stevens do that. six seconds ahead of the record early. He would God. need some of this time in Fire Sea, but good BLJs kept him well ahead. Three Bowser Straight into later, the thing is fucking nuts. Aki had done it again. No way. Dude, Aki's insane. He beat it by four seconds. Ludwig. Incredibly. Hello? Hello? Anyone see that? Ludwig. What is this, 2019? This is Ludwig pre pre blow up. This is this is 2019 Ludwig pre blow up. Saluting a Super Mario 64 legend for getting world record. Incredibly, this record put Aki 12 seconds ahead of anyone else on the leaderboard. And he didn't stop there. He kept he going? He kept doing attempts for Dude. a lower record. He even had paces multiple seconds ahead of the 1504. But every time, something would kill it. Oh. But in late 2019, the worst. Aki would finally get some competition. This guy's a machine, bro. Leaderboard. And this particular runner certainly had credentials. He was both the zero star and one star record holder. He was one of the best in the world at optimizing fast movement. And his name was Dowski. Nice. Dowski had previously held the 16 star record before getting a 1516 the day before Aki got his incredible 1508. That sucks. However, imagine 
Dude, that's like me getting the world record and three hours later it being beaten by like five seconds in Pogo Stuck when I got the world record. The backwards hat, sunglass emoji. Dude, he got a 15-16, took world record, and a day later it got beaten by eight seconds. Didn't that happen? Yes, that happened to me, Rose. Dude, eight seconds at the top level Super Mario 64 16 star run? In one day, you just you go from world record at 15-16 to, to losing it to a 15-08. That's like soul crushing. Like, for me, it wasn't that bad because, like, map 2 wasn't optimized enough at the time. So it was like, I knew I was going to lose the world record. It wasn't going to stay. But that's ridiculous. Eight seconds when people thought the runs was like were, like, insanely optimized. Time he wanted something more. A record that would last for a while. Even though his personal best was a few seconds behind Aki, he knew he had the skill to keep up with him. So, Dowski's record attempts began and on November 17th, he got on a run that fell behind early thanks to missing Canalys on the what? first try. However, he more than made up that time with a faster fire Woo! seat, including a different strategy at the end where he avoided jumping on the edge of the stage. He had a four second mm. lead over the record. This actually had sub 15 potential, but as always, the BLJs stood in the way. No, dude, BLJs are such a run killer. Wait, he did fine. Mm, that was a little slow. Straight in though, it's good. They weren't great, but his best possible time was still one second ahead of the record. I agree, something salt. If he could tear through the stage, he'd have a chance. Dude, so he just, he beat it with Bowser 3 movement? Oh, he's doubting himself. As it turns out, it would be record by just over a tenth of a second. For the first time in a year, Dude, Aki was no longer a record. A tenth of a second? With so many times being set in short succession, 16 star as a category was flourishing. There was really only one problem. At this point, it had been almost two years since someone with a funny username had set a record. <laughs> In recent months, there had been Aki and what? Dowski. Why is that a problem? A good one, you have to go back to Wait, hold on, Summoning Salt. Why is that a problem? <laughs> Why is it a problem if someone, <laughs> if someone with a funny username isn't the world record holder? Why is that a problem? <laughs> what? Was that what he said? There was really only one problem. Why, why is it a problem? At this point, it had been almost two years since someone with a funny username had set a record. <laughs> In recent months, there had been Aki and Dowski. But to get a good one, you have to go back to Ouija and his 1517. And even that one's not amazing compared to the likes of 420 Blaze It and Shivering Erotic King Banana. <laughs> okay. Well, in early 2020, someone wanted to rectify that. He started moving up on the leaderboards, going from 5th to 3rd place right behind the two 1504s. Who is this? And shortly thereafter, he would end up taking the top spot. And the runner's name certainly didn't disappoint. On February 27th, a 1503 was achieved. Oh, slippery okay, nip. slippery nip. This is the guy that has the current world record. He gained time early thanks to a faster LBLJ and managed to match Dowski's speed in making the Tsukishima cycle on the platforms. Ooh. In Womp's Fortress, he gained time by hitting cannon. No way! Time, partially thanks to his setup by- That's a nutty cannon list. Adjust the camera and clip in the wall more consistently. <laughs> what is that cannon list? He maintained this four second lead until the second MIPS clip, which took him two tries, but gained about a second back on the BLJ. Clean BLJ. Oh my God, he went in the clock. That worked out to a 15.03 just ahead of Dowski Ooh. and enough to make Slippery Nip the new record holder. The community was Slippery beginning to nip that they a left. barrier. They were now just four seconds away from a sub 15 minute run. Dude, that's nuts. The last time a minute barrier had been broken was almost nine years prior with Akira's 1554. Dude, dropping below a minute like that is crazy. Like I never thought anyone in their right minds was gonna dip below three minutes in pogo stuck i never thought it was i never thought it was gonna happen 
when I, like I thought like 305 was like the max potential when Jedi Jake had like a 309 and, and then dipped it to 307. I thought like 305 was like the peak, and now we're sitting at like 252 is the world record of Pogo Stuck. Like, dude, that sub 15 is is probably nuts for Super Mario 64 because it's the most famous speedrunning game. Now a run in the 14s was seeming inevitable, but what time saves were left? Well, looking at the 1503 record, the big potential time saves were the 4 seconds lost due to the MIPS clip, and a few seconds that could be saved on the BLJs. Mm. But beyond that, there were still fractions of a second to squeeze out all over. On LBLJ, Lethal Lava Land, Bowser in the Sky, all from subtle, faster strategies or improving movement. Those time saves all added up to a run well under 15 minutes but someone still had to take it there. And one player who would make a big push was Aki. Again? After getting a 1503 of his own, Aki would get a very promising run going on May 1st, 2020. No, it wait, wait. About... That's, like, that's like literally coronavirus quarantine time, bro. This shit's still going on. Aki's doing this shit today, probably. He's still going for it, probably. Now that Slippery Nip took the world record back, He's probably still going for it. About even going into the MIPS clips, where he messed up the first one instead of the second one. Still, a strong Fire C and BLJs kept him just ahead going into Bowser in the Sky. And there, he was able to make a faster elevator cycle called Monomo Cycle Ooh, by making his move as tight as possible. Okay. Oh my god. An incredible triple jump dive onto the platform. Three throws later, Aki was so close to a sub-15. <sighs> 50 milliseconds? Or is that 500? One more second to go. Aki pushed onward over the coming days and weeks, getting great runs on pace that eventually died to something. The biggest culprit, of course, were the BLJs. BLJs. Getting Mario to catch on the stairs seemed almost random at times. If you didn't get him to catch within a few jumps, it was run over, and even making it through would usually result in losing time. But Aki knew sub-15 was within reach. He just needed one good run past the BLJs. And on May 10th, 2020, Aki had this run. Dude, I had no idea this was still going on. It was about as close on. to a perfect Last run year. as you could get. Chances like this don't come along very often. Now, it's crazy more than ever, a year ago. the BLJs needed to happen. They didn't need to be very good, he just needed something decent. That was clean. Also insanely clean, straight in. Or oh he could God. get near perfect yeah, BLJs. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, summoning salt. This was his chance for the run of a lifetime. Here we go. 1543. That means it's still beatable. World record's still beatable. Hundo P. Oh. That ledge grab. Yo, he's choking. Dude, he just choked like two movement options in Bowser 3. He's got it though. Oh my god, dude. He's freaking out. By the skin of his teeth, Aki had pulled out a 1459. The world's first sub-15. Is that- alright, check- let's check this. Is that still what it is? He has- Oh no, he's beat. Oh no, that is it. That is. That is his current fastest time. He has not beaten that time to this day. So this is Aki's last or current time standing right now. Obviously, as good as it was, this run still had some room for improvement. He lost six seconds on the last split for mistakes in Bowser in the Sky. Which is crazy, by the but way. But still, that was it for big time losses. It was an incredible run up until then. 
and it was daunting to try and beat. For the next several months, there was little action at the top of the leaderboard. The top three stayed in the same spots, and 2021 came around with just Aki in the elusive sub-15 club. I remember this. I remember checking the leaderboard and being like, oh shit, someone got sub-15, and being like, there's only one person, and now there's like four. See this guy down here? This is... Yeah, that's my Discord. Kano. Oh, Kano. And he was sixth place in the world Kano. with a what 15 Kano? Kano? 17. He was considered an elite runner of the this game. This guy's legendary. But generally not considered a world record contender. 18 seconds was a lot of difference for a short category like 16 star. And there were several people between him and the top spot. Well, in February 2021... <laughs> Look at him with his Kano shirt off in the bottom left. <laughs> And he decided that he wasn't going to end this stream until he set a uh, 16 star. This is uh, this record. is what simply he talks wasn't going to be lot. playing all the time. He'd still live his life and sleep on a normal schedule, but his stream would stay live the entire time. He knew he'd have to do some work given how far he was from the record, but Kano didn't care. He wanted to be the record holder, so. He got to this work. This is some psychopath shit. Life went on, and Kano kept streaming 16 star. By March, his time was down to 1513. By April, it was 1507. His stream kept going. He was improving his skills Two and months, getting close by the way. to a record level. By May, he was starting to get really close, entering the top three with a 1503. All the while, Three the months, by the, the way. The stream climbed higher and higher, going past 1,000 and then past 2,000 hours. Until finally, on June 12th, 2021, Kano had this run. Dude, that's. That's two months ago. It's August 2021. That's two months ago. Er. Yeah, that's two months ago. He actually gained some time early thanks to a new strategy Woo! in shifting Sandland by Circle Mark 993. That was clean but as fuck. lost a bit on nips from slower setups for the Yo, clips. I've never seen that before. He bled a bit more in Fire Sea from an accidental oh. ground pound, and his BLJs weren't as clean as Aki's. But he knew the time he could save. But I've seen this. Sky. I've seen simply react to this. After a clean stage, three throws separated him from a record. I've seen Simply react to this. <laughs> what? Yes! <gasps> Wait, show the reaction. He has a camera. There it is. He froze. Cano.exe oh has stopped working. More than 3,000 hours of streaming Fucking finally hell. put behind him. Kano went from 6th to 1st, a 1517 to a 1458. An unbelievable push Fucking that paid Christ. off in the end. And Kano could finally hit the end stream button. As the summer of 2021 went on, a few people were going for a sub-1458. One of the most notable players was Ouija. He had set a record three years prior with a 1517, but hadn't been able to replicate it. Still, he was considered a top runner. For Sorry, I speak English now? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that says up there. Sorry. I don't speak French. I'm bad at French. For years, he would continue lowering his personal best staying within seconds of the record at all times. However, he never was able to take that top spot again, despite coming close on several occasions. At least, until July 4th, 2021. Clean BLJ. Another clean one. Not straight enough. Gold? Fire C gold? 
after 39 months, thousands of attempts, and numerous personal bests in the top 5, Luigi had finally done it again. He had beaten all the rest, and Did had he... taken back the world record. I didn't. I didn't get it. Dude, just free time. No, I didn't get it. No, oh my god! No! <laughs> Luigi, you fool! When Luigi stopped to scroll through the text boxes, Mario was facing away from the star. All he had to do was turn around and jump into the star, but he accidentally jumped forward and lost about a second. It cost him the record. To this day, he's still trying to get it back. Dude, that's so... Oh my god, dude. I would fucking... I would just end stream immediately and just be depressed. That's like... He's just so chill about it. He just goes and resets. He doesn't even say anything. Dude, I would be head in hands. He did a frame-perfect jump so he didn't turn around. What the fuck? Oh, dude. But that's not the last run to talk about. Because in August 2021... No way, he talks about it. A runner would come back to snag one final record. He talks about it. The one that happened last week? Am I crazy? That strat is fucking lit, by the way. Oh. He fucked up. Hello? Oh, golded? Whoa. Whoa. Please, it says. That strat's nuts. So, who was the runner? Well, it wasn't Ouija, it wasn't Aki, Dowski, or Kano. There's only one username it could have been. Slippery nip. <laughs> Dude, that's fucking nuts. Wow. Alright, cool. Sweet. What a lame reaction! If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. And check out the pinned comment for links to people who helped with research and the runners in the video. Wow, okay. Thanks. Cool. What? How do you get world record in the most monumental speedrunning game of all time and just go, wow, cool. How do you, how? How do you not freak out? I was there live at the end of his record. He literally had no reaction. How? How do you not hit that and lose your shit? I don't understand that. That's crazy. I hit that. I'm like Kano. I freak the fuck out. I'm like, I'm like fucking crying. I'm emotional. I'm losing my mind. This guy's just like, wow. Okay. This is cool. What? You're playing them. You just got world record in one of the, the, the most popular category of the most famous speedrunning game of all time. Dude, that's crazy. I don't understand that at all.